Today I have two artist books that use maps to document the movement of the artists in a city over time. Those cities are Havana, Cuba and New York City. Stephen Daber is a U.S. artist who has made many visits to Cuba. While there, he collaborates and teaches. Much of his work reflects the struggles and lives of Cubans. This book of Daber's, La Acera, The Sidewalk, is about how Daber, his wife Jackie, and daughter Lily came to Havana. Daber describes La Acera as a walking map recording the daily lives of Red Trillium Press traveling to Havana for over 15 years. The first thing I noticed about La Acera is its size. It's nearly that of a sidewalk square. Inside, three sidewalks are documented, all printed on the 1979 Atlas Nacional de Cuba. The first sidewalk is in Old Havana at Plaza de Armas, the place where the city was founded. Here, sidewalks were cut into the limestone. Daber took rubbings directly from the sidewalk to create the screen print of this first section. The beautiful scrolling lines evoke an old Spanish city. There's a legend in the corner of the page that works for all three maps. It is color-coded and points you to the Daber's regular stops. The white arrow tells us these stops are related to Talagrafico. Here, Daber taught and sometimes printed. The second map is of Havana City. Daber has recreated a cement section of sidewalk, complete with graffiti and footprints that were made before the cement had dried. On the edge, there are prints of plants. The real plants he inked with a brayer and pressed directly onto the screen. A few steps later, a photo emulsion process turns the plant image into a negative for screen printing. Talking to Daber, I heard about many of the shortcuts and practical techniques he used to print in a country where resources are limited, expensive, or non-existent. Along the top of this page is a pinkish trail made from inking a bicycle tire and rolling it along. The third section is of Daber's neighborhood. Every trip to Cuba, his family goes back to the same apartment. The landlady has become a grandmother to Lily. The sidewalk here is in serious disrepair, much of it worn down to dirt. Daber writes, everyone walks in Cuba. You walk to the agro for fruits and vegetables. You traverse neighborhoods in search of the lowest prices on soap, coffee, soya oil, or deodorant. Walking in Havana is a delight for the foreigner who watches the city breathe change. For the Cuban though, life in Havana more often remains la lucha. The struggle. This artist book is titled Call a Wrecking Ball to Make a Window by Shana Agid. Agid is an artist, designer, teacher, and activist whose work focuses on relationships of power and difference in visual, social, and political cultures. She is an associate professor of arts, media, and communication at Parsons School of Design. The design of Wrecking Ball is well executed. Referencing the title, the paper slip case gives us both a window and a suggestion of a wrecking ball. Aga describes Call a Wrecking Ball to Make a Window as a map fold book that explores routes taken and spaces made by queer people in New York City from the 1970s through the 2000s, drawing links between the lives of gay men in that period and my own coming out during the AIDS epidemic in the early 1990s. To accomplish this, Agat overlays his own pathways over that of queer artist David Wojnarowicz, who died of AIDS in 1992. For example, he climbed into the car of one of Ken Kesey's merry pranksters who took him the 1,400 miles to New Jersey where he stepped up on the porch of his family's home and told them he was queer. When he took leave of his family and headed across the river into New York City, he would have been just in time for my cocktail hour arrival at St. Luke's Hospital on the Upper West Side one Tuesday in December. Touching down across five decades, 
Agate marks the histories of New York City's ongoing evolution and her own and Wojnarowicz's political and personal transformations. Here's an excerpt from the last paragraph. It is 2005 and I just left the doctor and am standing on the corner of 8th Avenue and 18th Street. I get nervous because despite being queer since Angie kissed me, I don't know what comes next. If I were brave, I would go up on those tracks before they are open to everyone before they take away this thing that reminds me of him for no good reason except how it graces the island, how it is a rusted shell, how, like so much else, it is a big secret in the middle of everything, a big, wide-open secret. Agid says of Manhattan that it is a good landscape for telling impossible stories. It's a landscape in which, like Stephen Daber's Havana, People will continue to map their identities, finding both themselves and their history.